What's my motivation? That's a refrain that we often hear from actors, but that phrase can actually mean a lot for photographers too, especially when you're trying to recreate natural light. In the real world, sometimes sunlight comes through big windows. Sometimes there's a curtain in front of that window. Sometimes the window is really small. And sometimes sunlight bounces off of white walls and windows and metal outdoors. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you four lighting setups and my motivation for each one. Everybody says that they love window light, especially people who are new to photography and who don't have much experience using flash. They like to fancy themselves as available light photographers. As a young photographer, I heard from the older photojournalists I knew that you really can't beat window light, so just pose your portrait subject next to one, and that's all you need to do. Of course, they were forgetting that there were going to be mixed light problems due to interior incandescent lights and an overall lack of brightness on days when the sky was overcast. But in general, they were right. If you started out as a natural light photographer and you found that your images are too noisy or lack sharpness or have strange colors, now is the time for you to transition over into the world of flash. The Dutch masters would pose their subjects at a slight angle to an open window. This would be so that they could produce what has now become known as Rembrandt lighting, something that most people love. I know that I'm a big fan of Rembrandt. You can simulate window light by using a softbox or an umbrella off to one side at anywhere between 30 to 60 degrees from your subject the placement of which will depend upon your individual desire to see shadows in your work. But no matter where you place it, you want to make sure that there is light on both of the subject's upper eyelids. If you place your light too high, you're going to end up with their brow casting a shadow onto their eyes. And you're going to lose catch lights as well. And catch lights are simply reflections of your light source in their eyes. If you place your light too low, Beams of light will illuminate the underside of their nose and it will cast a shadow from their nose that actually ends up going upwards, both of which can be seen as mistakes and can be regarded as unflattering or spooky. I've heard other photographers say that the bottom of your softbox should be equal to the height of your subject's jaw, but I have always tried to have my flash tube higher than the subject's eyes. Right now, the bottom of my octobox that's lighting my face is just a little bit higher than my eyes. I would like it to be a little bit lower, but I can't do that, otherwise it will block the camera. So this might happen to you, but just think about that in general when you're lighting. Regardless of your visual marker, you just need to make sure that you have catch lights and you avoid up lighting. By pitching your softbox downwards, this will cause your shadows to go in a downward direction and will also add more light to the lower part of your photo, slightly evening out your exposure from the top to the bottom. If you change the tilt of your softbox so that it's perpendicular to the floor, the light will be more focused on your subject's face and upper body. The former will be simulating light coming from a transom or a high window, and the latter will simulate light just coming from a window that's sort of even with their face. You might also wish to use a boom arm and place your softbox or umbrella so that the light comes directly from the top. This will simulate light coming from a skylight, and that light will be more focused on your subject's face, and then it will fall off gradually as you go down in the frame. This light will often be very pleasing, especially if you're trying to accentuate the model's physique. But when you place the light in this position, you want to make sure that the softbox isn't too close to your subject or else their forehead is going to end up being too bright. So you just want to move it a little bit in front of them and that will allow for light to hit both of their upper eyelids. 
Now, if you tilt it just slightly, you'll end up with a very subtle catch light. The other thing to keep in mind is the further you move the softbox away from your subject, the more pleasing the light will be, but it will also be a lot less dramatic. So back in the real world, we could put a sheer curtain in front of our large window, and that would darken the light coming through overall, but the result would just be this beautiful, soft, gorgeous light. And it really would be hard to beat. In a studio environment, we could just put a translucent reflector or a scrim between our softbox and our subject. And that would do a great job. You could use a DIY approach and use anything from an opaque shower curtain to an actual sheer curtain. But the problem with that usually is gonna be mounting options and also these DIY objects will possibly give us sort of a yellow or off color cast. That's why most of the time you see people using, you know, professional uh, gear for this sort of thing. Lately, I've really gotten into using scrims and diffusion material, and it really does produce nice diffuse soft lighting, and it's a great way to mix things up. What if we had a small window? That would create a shaft of hard light coming through and sort of cast really dramatic shadows. One way to recreate a shaft of light in the studio is to use an optical snoot. And lately I've been using a very generically branded Nice Photo SN29 optical snoot. You can pick one of these up on Amazon for only about $200 and I'll put a link to, uh, link to one in the description. This is a, a great tool because you can put a gobo in the middle of it, which is essentially just a metal stencil. And these gobos can be all sorts of shapes. And what happens is the light passes through the gobo and then through a lens and the shadow that the gobo casts is then projected onto your subject. So the gobos I've been using have been circles or maybe they look like windows. So they could even be abstract shapes too. So in this example, I wanted to create a very dramatic look that sort of looked like a spotlight on a stage. And so I just used a circular gobo in my nice photo SN29 and I put it off to one side and then I cranked my 500 watt second light all the way up and one side effect of the nice photo is that it does sort of absorb a lot of light. So I had to turn my ISO up a little bit, but it really projected this nice circle onto my subject and then onto the background. And it was a great way to make a very easy dramatic portrait. We've all seen this in real life. Maybe you haven't recognized it, but if you start looking around, you'll probably start seeing it everywhere. The sun shines onto a white wall and then it bounces back into the shadows, creating extremely beautiful light. In any city's downtown, you will sometimes see the sunlight bouncing off of a building's glass facade and onto another, creating multiple shadows strafing across the sidewalk as people walk through two and sometimes three beams of light at once. When I was photographing marathon runners, I would always seek out this type of lighting because it was absolutely magical. By using flash, you can really make your own magic anywhere. You just need a battery powered light and a small softbox or an umbrella. Most of the time when I'm shooting outdoors, I like to pose my subject between me and the sun, even on an overcast day. And the reason why is so that the sun can be my hair light. When it's cloudy, this light will be really subtle and just sort of create a gentle rim. And when it's, uh, you know, very sunny, it'll be more dramatic. And in either event, I'm gonna light them from the front, possibly off to one side uh, with my softbox or my umbrella. And this will look very natural and mostly very pleasing. You just wanna make sure that you don't have the light too far off to one side because you might, on a sunny day, create some really dark shadows on the opposite side. And that's gonna look very unflattering. So you just wanna make sure that you're not making this mistake. If you really find a composition that you wanna shoot, but that means that the sun will be behind you, 
You can always block the light that's hitting your subject by using a reflector or a translucent reflector, or you could even just use a piece of cardboard that you fished out of some recycle bin like I did in this example. That way you can block the harsh shadows that might come from the sun and just create really pleasing and beautiful light with your modifier on the model's face. Anyway guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on the bell, all of that good stuff. And until next time, wear your mask, call your mom, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon.